Good afternoon. My name is With Morris. I'm a retired extension agent from Virginia Cooperative Extension. And we are going to look at today a series called Developing a Farm-Based Traceability System. And this is part of your gap preparation and uh, we'll get through and I'll be guiding you through this slide set. When you look through your gap audit document and questions, you'll see that uh, traceability comes up quite often and not only in one area, but pretty much in every area in the audit document. And uh, just to kind of let you know, this used to be a, a audit possibility or a audit within itself, but now, like we said, it is spread throughout. If you'll see here, uh, in the general questions, G1 and G2, it asks you, do you have a traceability system? Has it, has it been established? Do you do a mock recall? Uh, each production area in, in the farm review is asked, have you identified your farm areas, your field numbers, and so forth? Are they coded? Uh, it asks you in, in field harvest, field pack, and 2.21, it asks you, uh, are these products moving out of the field? Uh, are they identified correctly? Are they identified so that you can you know where they originated from? And it goes on in, in the other parts of the audit. It also asks, it depends on what level you're at, but if you go through a packing facility or a processing facility or whatever, you keep records of traceability. The key words that have been with traceability the whole way are one step back, one step forward. So we're going to explore and talk about these further. So when we go to set up our system, as we just said, uh, one step back, one step forward, you can kind of see here, we're going to talk today about a coded entry or in a lot of cases, you'll hear it mentioned and talked to and described as a lot number. Uh, it can have several different items in it, but the ones that are required and the ones that, that we concentrate on are, as you see here, date harvested, crop harvested, and field location. And we're going to show you how to set that up into a lot number uh, entry so that you can use it throughout your traceability system. Part B is an invoice entry, and that is your one step forward. And most everybody here, when you go to sell product, you write up an invoice for your buyer or your customer. And so it gives some various pieces of information that can serve for one step forward so that you do not have to duplicate your activities as far as recording and, and record keeping. So we will use an invoice to do that with. And then lastly, uh, production log and what this is, this is a way that you can account for everything that you've harvested out of your field and what you do with it. And that will be the one step back. And it'll also give you a place to document where those items go to. In other words, when they leave your farm, uh, where are they located? Where do they go? And so these are, these are important items. Uh, we do have, in this particular case, uh, a real easy production log that we're going to talk about. It's a one-page system and, and seems to be uh, pretty streamlined and been tested by farmers before, so we want to share that with you today. Now, when we went to put this system together and understand that uh, it's one that we put together, we have run it by farmers, uh, we have gotten input, and and they have helped us tweak it over the years. And we have been using it now uh, probably since uh, 2007 or eight. And it seems to work very well for a lot of growers. And so a lot of people have adopted the entire system or parts of it therefore, uh, so that they have that incorporated in their traceability system. Now, when you go to look at this and you look, here are some things that we looked at when we started. We wanted to make sure this system was simple, it was easy to use, that it was stable over time. In other words, uh, if you're using this, you did not have to go back every spring or every year and basically what I call reinvent the wheel, but you could pick up where you left off and this 
this system would stay stable over over continued usage and years. We wanted to do it with a minimal number of digits in our lot codes. And I can tell you that when we started, we started with seven. Uh, after we worked with some growers and some various crops, uh, it became evident that we needed two more digits. And those happened to be the last two digits of the year, mainly because we had some growers that had product that carried over from one year to the next. In other words, they were harvested in uh, one year and by the time they were stored and processed and shipped to buyers, uh, some of them uh, had, had buyers in the following year that were buying product. We wanted to leave room for future growth. And when I say that, uh, you don't have to use all the slots here, but we have designed it so that you could use it for up to 99 different uh, crops that you might be growing. You don't have to use all of the slots, just what you need for your farm. And you may start out and you may not have but one, two, or three crops that you're growing. So you would use a very small amount of this, but you would have room for growth if you added crops in the future. The same way with fields and land where you're doing your production, uh, you may have a certain number of fields, but as you grow and, and so forth, you may add or lease land. And with that being said, this was going to give you a chance to add that and, and, and not have to redo what you already have established. Also, uh, one of the things that we talk about and we encourage people to do, when you really do your setup the very first time, after that, any time that you need to add a crop or add a field to this system, pick up with the next available blank number in your, in your documentation. And so therefore, you just keep adding and your numbers are in sequence there. But you don't have to edit. Do not edit because that would mean that you're changing numbers for crops that you have already been growing over previous years. And so we don't want to cause, cause any more uh, headaches or, or paperwork than we have to. So you'll see how this works, but add on to your crop list and add on to your, your field list, but don't edit them out or rewrite them. You'll see how this works. Now let's take a look at our, our traceback code system or lot number, if you want to call it that. We used a very simple uh, uh, acronym that we could hopefully remember time after time. And so our numbers in our lot code go like this. On date and year, which we're going to show you how to do those, I harvested a crop, which you will have a number assigned for that crop from field number, and that will be the number that you've assigned to your field, your production field. So on date and year, I harvested a crop from field number. And if you can remember this and, and apply this, then seeing there are lot numbers, your lot numbers, and those will be unique for your farm, uh, you'll be able to interpret those without a lot of uh, issue from here on. And this is the basis for our lot system, our lot number system. Now, as we go to set up our dates in, in our, our lot numbers, uh, we're going we're gonna to use the Julian calendar, which if you're not familiar with that, that's, that means that each day of the year has its own unique number ranging from day one to day 365. Now, Julian calendar, and, and we also have one set up for a leap year when you have that extra day added in. So depends on which one you need for the particular year you're working, but that will give you a three-digit number for each particular date of the year. And so with that, what you need to understand here is that, that it takes three digits. Uh, when you think of day one through nine, as it is here, if you're entering a date like January the 9th, this would be 009 in your coding system. So your first three numbers of your date would be 009. March 17th, for example, would be coded as 076. 
It's the 76th day of the year that you're working here. The year code needs to be the last two digits of this current year. Example, if it was 2011, then your year code would be an 11. Now, these calendars are available to you and we have them in some of your materials that you have today. And uh, if you've got your manual uh, or worked with us in, in doing the manuals, you'll know that section five has your Julian calendars in there. Now, what we suggest doing is, is uh, make sure that, that you have the information that you need to set up uh, your, your lot numbers. And if you need to, you can make copies of these. You can put them in a separate binder to carry them to the field in order to generate your lot numbers or whatever. But there are a lot of different ways to do this. The main thing is that you have at your disposal what you need to come up with your date codes. Here you see that we've got, we've got a sample of a Julian calendar. And again, these are in your materials. And if not, they're downloadable from my website. So uh, you've got access to these Julian calendar uh, numbers that correspond with your dates and everything. And you can see here, January 1 would be a 001. And it goes along until you get to uh, uh, a three digit number, which would be over here, the 10th of April is where you start to get three digit numbers. Anything before, you're gonna have to add some zeros in front of those to make them fit the uh, formula that we have. But this goes all the way through, all the way to December 31st, which would be day number 365. So let's take a look at your crop codes and how we set these up. And there are a couple of special things here that I want to talk about because, believe it or not, when you do this, and if you do a good job, not only does it serve as traceability, but it also helps you reduce a lot of farm risk as far as liability and so forth in the future. So you want to make sure you do a really good job on this. Now, I've given you, and you see on the right here, you see a list of crops and traceback codes to go along with those. And I can tell you, this is a generic list. That's I, I, Not many people would ever have that many different crops. But uh, if you do, again, you've got room for a hundred different crops in your crop code list. So within that, let's think about a couple things. First of all, you want to look at the idea of annual crops. And uh, to give you an idea, when you start to fill in, when you start to fill in the names of your crops on your list, look at this just a minute. You want to designate your crops like pepper. Uh, you don't want to just say peppers. You want to say sweet bells, hots, bananas, whatever type it is, that's where we're going with. And because there are a lot of different ones, and if you were to designate every pepper with the same crop code and, and number set up, uh, you could be you could lose a lot of crops. If you had a quarantine on one field of bell peppers and you had a lot of different varieties, but you only listed pepper, your quarantine is going to cover every field that has peppers in it. So you want to make sure one of the things you want to do is designate within the crops what, what they are. Annual crops are designated by types. We're going to talk about two different ones. But when you talk about annual crops, look at this just a minute. Uh, cucumbers, you may have a couple of different kinds. You can put in there slicers for the larger ones or pickling for smaller cucumbers. You do not have to put every single variety that you grow, but you're going to designate them by types. And so with that being said, uh, if you think about it, I'll give you another example. If you just put summer squash, summer squash, there are a lot of different types of summer squash. One is, is zucchini, one uh, say is crookneck, 
one is yellow straight neck, and various and sundry other summer squash. With that being said, you want to, when you choose a number on your list, you want to put summer squash dash crookneck, summer squash dash zucchini, whatever. You want to designate what type they are. If you can go to this level and designate the types, you can uh, uh, have a pretty sophisticated uh, traceability list and at the same time uh, help you reduce your liability. Now, if you're growing perennial crops, and remember your annual crops are everything that you, uh, that you put in the field, you planted this year, you harvested this year. Perennial crops are those that are going to be in the field for multiple years, year after year. And so when you go to perennial crops, you trace them a little bit differently. For instance, if you're doing apples, you'll want to assign a number to apples, golden delicious. You want to assign a number to apple, honey crisp, or apple, red delicious. Whatever you're growing there, you go, if it's a perennial crop, you're going to go down to the variety type. So with that, that falling into play, any type of perennial crops, including blueberries, asparagus, peaches, and, and you can probably think of numerous other perennial crops that you might grow. All of these have to be done down to the variety. Now, if you want to leave open slots or spaces in your crop list to add different varieties later on, uh, that's fine. That's fine. But you can add items then as, as, as you get to open slots. If you run out of open slots, then move to the very last number that's available and start there with your next set of numbers. But this way you don't, again, it goes back to the thing of, of add on but do not add it. You add on at, at whatever available slot you have, but you don't go back and erase any that you've already put in your system. Now, once you've set up your codes for your operation, only add the new ones to the end of the list, like I just said, okay? And again, your crop list, your crop code list is part of your traceability system. And I'll emphasize this again, if you uh, need to, make you a copy of these, keep a copy in your manual, and make you a copy in a separate three-ring binder so that you can take it to the field or have it available if you need to. So with that being said, crop codes, that's your next uh, two-digit number in your code. Now we're going to move on to our field code. Okay, as we look at our field codes, uh, we have another sheet of traceback codes just for the fields. And a couple of statements here that I like to make to, to help you again. The more farms or fields are subdivided, the better for your traceback plan. In other words, uh, it helps you to reduce the risk if you can separate crops in within fields. Even if you have two crops and they're side by side, if, if you can designate the fields differently, uh, you will reduce your risk. Now, the number fields are, are the more numbered fields are more recognizable and safe. So, we suggest this, and and some of the requirements ask ask a question: Have your fields been marked or numbered? And so, what we do, we suggest that you uh, you mark each of your fields, and it can be it can be done very simply. If you have some scrap plywood or whatever, you could cut you some squares. And even as simple as, as spray paint, spray the number on the squares and mount them at the gate or the entrance to each of the fields so that everybody knows if that's field number three or it's field number five or whatever. And uh, numbered fields are safer. And, and if you'll think about it just a little bit, uh, a lot of times we'll have what I call nicknames for fields. If they've been in the family for years and years, we may know them by different types of names other than numbers. But if you have workers there, if you have additional workers who are not familiar with that or temporary workers or whatever, uh, 
you want to make sure that they can understand where to go for certain activities, whether it's harvest or planting or whatever. And so a numbered system uh, helps everybody to be more recogni recognizable and safer. This system can also apply to your crop protection materials for spraying. And that way you're using the same number system for both. So numbered fields are recognizable and safe. You want to post your signage that we just talked about to identify those. Uh, if, you're a, if you have greenhouses or high tunnels, uh, just remember that those count as a field when you're numbering, when you're coding. They're a field just like uh, if it was an open field. And I suggest on those, most of the time, uh, one greenhouse gets one field number. One high tunnel gets one field number. Don't try to use multiple numbers inside those fields. Now, I said also that uh, a lot of times, the, and it goes back to the first one, the more your farms are subdivided. So with that being said, let's talk about another point here just a minute. And that is when you go to separate and number your fields, if you have some type of a, let's say uh, you have a field and you have a little grove of trees in the middle of it that you plow around or so forth, uh, if there's some way that you can designate the upper field from the lower field with a physical barrier or, or one that you've, you've marked or whatever, uh, that's better for your traceability. That reduces your risk, even if it's the same crop in both fields. If you can have that, uh, it will reduce your traceability risk. So just keep that in mind. I've had some that, for instance, uh, had one grower one time had a 60 acre bottom right next to a, a creek. And within that bottom, in order to break it up, they, they measured it off and they actually measured it off in their case. And they had five or six different sections within that large field and they marked them with post with their field numbers on them so that they would know that this is field number one, number two, number three, number four, and so forth. And with that being said, uh, they could, when they come out with trace numbers or lot numbers, uh, that's going to give them different numbers for different fields. And it's going to allow uh, for a little bit more uh, risk reduction in there. So with that being said, you'll want to, once you get your fields set up, uh, you'll want to make you a copy of those and put that in that extra binder so that you can take it to the field with you when you're when you're doing harvest and so forth. So this is a thing that you're going to do. And if you do a good job the first time, it's very, very easy to fill in your extra data uh, from here on out without having to redo these things year after year. So if we look at our traceback codes, let's go back to our acronym that we started with. If we look at that date and year, that date was a three digit number, which will be the first three digits of your lot number. That year was a two digit number. That'll be the second two digits. The crop number, which is a two digit number, will be the third set of digits and the field number then will be the fourth. Now, when you look at these crop numbers or, or lot numbers that we have set up here, uh, remember when you're setting these up, you do not necessarily have to separate them with hyphens because you know from our acronym and the way we've set these up that you'll, they'll always fall in this sequence and you can pretty well pick them out without having to have hyphens in between. So remember again, all your date codes, your Julian calendar codes, have to have three digits in it. So uh, just remember that when you're setting up your traceback codes. Now let's look at some examples here of, of different codes. And examples here, if we're doing harvest at different times, uh, you can see, on, uh, just give you an example. On June 25th, 2011, I harvested cabbage from the Jones Farm. 
Now, in, in our examples, our generic examples that I gave you here, uh, you have a number designated for each one of those. And if you go back to, to look at those, you will be able to pick out the numbers that will make up your lot number to, to reinforce what you are doing on that particular day. And it works each time. And, and with that being said, uh, when you go to look at these, you can see that each one of these uh, comes out with a very unique lot number. And those lot numbers then will stay with that crop throughout the time it's on your farm. And when it leaves your farm, that will be what you will use when you, when you transfer it to your next in line, whether it be a buyer or a customer or whoever. Those are the lot numbers, and, and again, they're very unique. Each time you go to the field to harvest, you will have a unique lot number. Now, let's look at an example and, and see if, if our system is uh, pretty easy to work with here. Uh, I happen to be standing in a, a shed, receiving shed, when these came from the field. And once they were begin to load, unload off the truck, if you'll see the harvest containers in this case were five gallon buckets. And uh, you've, got, you've got a certain crop there and you've got these little uh, uh, bright colored cards with the number 12 on them. So with that being said, uh, basically if I'm standing in that particular uh, facility on a certain date, I know my date. If I look at these and I have a crop number code for yellow straight neck squash, and then if I look a little further, I have a card that each of the, the harvest crew carry in the rear pockets and they'll drop a card in there and that card has a particular field number on it. So these, these were, were yellow straight neck squash from field 12 and I know the day that I'm standing here watching these, so I could easily generate a lot number for what I'm seeing here in this picture. So with that being said, uh, once I've brought these into my facility and I've done the washing and grading and packaging and so forth, uh, I need to mark these with a, with a lot number and on these particular ones, and this is a very simple system here, but the each of the boxes end up with a lot number. And what they did in this case, they took a return address label and they had a printer here. And basically they could generate a whole page of lot numbers that could be used for this product as it's getting ready to finish out and become finished product before it goes into storage and then this will go on as far as the buyers are concerned and so forth. But you can see that they have marked this. And again, one of the things that uh, uh, people ask a lot of times, and, and this question kind of brings this to light, do I have to put a sticker on every box? You have to put a sticker on every marketable unit. So with that being said, if you sell it by the box, then you probably are going to need to put a sticker on each box. I do have growers that in certain cases, they have pallets and they sell it by the pallet load. And each pallet contains a certain number, whether it's 12 or 16 boxes or whatever. They will take plastic and poly wrap it to tie all of those boxes together. And then they will put a label on the pallet and that pallet becomes that marketable unit. Everything in that pallet has the same lot number. So that has been done also. And in certain situations, that is the, the only method that you can do. And I give you an example. I've had people that, are, that have harvested kale or collard greens that have gone through a wash process and the boxes, the, the crates are soaking wet, the water is dripping out of them and there is absolutely no way to put any type of a sticker on that particular uh, container or package. So they put them on pallets, wrap them, and again, they mark in the plastic 
on the outside and they sell it by the pallet. So just remember it's the marketable unit that you put a label on. So let's look, let's look at this box just a minute and see if we can't figure out what we have here in the way of a lot number. <coughs> Excuse me. If you will look, we've got a date here of 152. So if we looked on our Julian calendar and pulled out 152, that will tell us what date they were harvested. The second two digits, 12, this was harvested in 2012. Now, if I peek through this handle hole here, I'm looking at some green zucchini, summer squash green zucchini. So that number must be on our list. It must be number 39. And in this case, the zucchini was grown and harvested from field number 11. So that allows us to have a lot number there that we can work with throughout the time that we have this product in our hands. And it helps us do all the details of one step back in our traceability program. So you can see right there, each lot number gives us a whole lot of information. So let's, let's go to one step forward just a minute and look at one step forward. And we said we're gonna use our invoices that we use. Most of you, if, if you're like most growers, you don't get paid unless you give the buyer an invoice to tell them how much they owe you. And in most cases, it's a buyer or customer needs that invoice to take with them when they take that product from your farm. So with that being said, you've got several pieces of information here. One of them is the date that you shipped it, that they took it from your farm. This is the name of the buyer or customer and their address where it goes to. And it also, in most cases, it's gonna have your information here, your farm name and information also. Now, another thing that, that we have tried to emphasize, and it's a very good idea, and down here, it's, I say, get, your, get a signature. In other words, when that buyer or that transporter picks up your product, have them sign for it that everything was there and in good order and the correct number and so forth. And this then for, when that happens, that transfers ownership from you to your buyer or your customer. That being said, your, your traceability responsibilities are over. They take over from there. They have the startup, they have the information as to what they have picked up from you and the quantity. And so they're ready then to trace it through their facility uh, at the next level. It's not your responsibility from their own, it's theirs. So with that being said, that signature transfers ownership from you to your buyer. And if they need to make any notations about quality or anything, it needs to go on here at this time. So let's take a look at the last part of this uh, operation or this activity. And in this, we've got a, a production log. And in, in this case, we call it a production disposition report. And basically, it fulfills the one step back, one step forward requirement of the traceability plan. In other words, all of this comes together on this one sheet. Now, it accounts also, in this particular case, it accounts for what came from your field You'll see a dotted line, and this is what goes out. And then you also have a place on here if you have some unsold product or damaged product that has to come out of your inventory. You have a place to account for that. One of the things that, that our farmers, as, as we worked with this initially, one of the things that they wanted us to do, and we corrected that, was to assign one sheet, one sheet like this for each commodity or crop code that you're working with. So that means that during the season when you're harvesting, if you go back in that field three or four times, 
each time you're going to have another unique lot number each time if you harvest today and then har don't harvest for four or five days from now each time you do that you will generate a different lot number but at the end of the season this is going to tell you how much you have produced out of uh, as for that particular commodity or crop uh, before this was was started and before traceability uh, most farmers knew how much inputs they knew how much seed cost and fertilizer and diesel fuel and labor and so forth but this is the actually the first time that they ever knew exactly how much they had produced after they had put all of those inputs in it and with that being said a lot of farmers started to find out that some of the things that they had been growing uh, they had I call it they had been growing uh, for their health for their pure enjoyment they hadn't made a whole lot of money off of it and this is going to help you make decisions in the future as far as what to grow what not to grow so just kind of keep that in mind now the top is incoming product what we do we have generated our lot number whether it's in the field or the receiving facility where we bring it in and this is for these are our quantity this is how many harvest containers in other words if we harvested 50 and five gallon containers our harvest totes or whatever then we'll put that there now here's the deal if you can do this then the time during the time that you are doing your grading washing packaging and so forth use this right over here where it has for notes and put down if you if you started with 50 harvest containers from the field and you ended up with 80 boxes of finished product put 80 boxes of finished product just put it right in there so with that being said what that's going to do that's going to allow you to account for finished product without having to account for every cull and every product that you had to take out during the grading and washing process it goes from harvested product to finished product right here that being said then then that is our one step back now when we get to ship it finished product if we ship it down here that same lot number goes down here then finished product quantity and how many bushels or four-fifths bushels or boxes or whatever your marketable unit is goes here and then you've got your customer and the date it was shipped and so this allows you to account for everything that's going out or leaving your farm now if you had 80 boxes up here and you sold all 80 to one buyer you would just use one line down here but if you had 80 boxes up here and you sold 40 and 20 and 20 then you'll use three lines and that means you sold 40 to this buyer 20 to this customer and 20 to this buyer whatever so it gives you an opportunity to break down the finished product into whatever direction it goes as far as when it goes one step forward now this last section and I want to take just a minute to explain this to you but here we've gotten there all of our stuff harvested we've got it into finished product we've got it on pallets it's ready to ship out and then we're getting ready to load the truck and all of a sudden uh, two boxes fall off the top edge and hit the floor and squash goes rolling everywhere so we got two damaged boxes so what do we do with it that lot number goes down here two boxes go down here so that means rather than accounting for 80 total here we're accounting for 78 plus 2 gives us our total of 80 that came out originally so with that being said that allows you to account for any unsold product it also accounts and and I'll just give you one more example we've had growers that that donate produce for whatever reason whether it's a church social or a, a, a FFA event or 4-H or whatever so 
If it's donated, you can pull it out of your inventory and put it down here and who got it. And uh, that way you've, you've still accounted for all of your finished product. You do not have to put anything in here related to prices. And just to go back, food safety audits are not about what you get or sell your product for. So you do not see anything here. That is all up to you. And that is, that is your business and nobody else's. So with that being said, we use a one page traceability uh, accounting sheet, uh, production disposition report, or whatever you want to call it, uh, for each commodity that we have in our, in our crops. So that gives you an opportunity to do all of this at one location with one sheet of paper. And it makes accounting pretty easy for all of your your uh, traceability as far as it's concerned. So that's that's pretty much the third. If you want to contact me or look, I've got a website set up so that a lot of this information, a lot of these forms are downloadable and you will see some changes coming with a couple of items as and we're going to talk about it today, but a few items and updates will be there but uh, if you don't see it right away keep going back and looking for it uh, it will be there very shortly and that way you will have access to any of the forms that you need for traceability uh, and, and you will have that at our website and again I've enjoyed talking to you today uh, if you have any questions uh, you can send them to me. I'll be glad to answer them. I do a lot of email and I answer them by email or I can tell you where to locate them. You can also send me a message through that website that I just showed you and I can get back to you that way also. So if you have any questions on traceability, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I'll try to answer anything that you have. I've enjoyed it and thank you very much.